So the Army's Manufacturing Technology Program is a research and development program that focuses on maturing manufacturing processes in order to deliver technologies that are being developed concurrently at an affordable cost to the Army, uh, enabling production of those things where otherwise there might not be a production capacity or capability to deliver. And so we do that by working alongside of the science and technology efforts that the Army has, as well as working with our RD, uh, our R&D organizations, uh, both within RDECOM and across the Army with SMDC, the uh, Space and Missile Defense Command, the um, medical community out of Fort Detrick, and the Corps of Engineers. Uh, they have an engineering center down in Vicksburg, Mississippi. And so we work with those organizations to identify high priority efforts that they're working on with their core uh, S&T programs or that they're working through customer funded efforts with their program offices that they're associated with. And we look at the manufacturing associated with those products. And so an example would be body armor. We've got a new body armor material that's being developed within the research laboratories uh, or within industry and academia. And as those materials mature and the, the science and technology efforts associated with those materials mature, we look at how we manufacture those materials and how you take those materials and put them into a, a shape and a form factor that is uh, appropriate for body armor. And then taking those individual materials and smashing them together to consolidate them, uh, the, the ceramic plates along with the composite backing structures and the glue that holds those together to be able to demonstrate the manufacturing feasibility of that, buy down the, the cost of doing that and, and the risk associated with that. And so we do that across the entire Army landscape in terms of products, anything that, anything that the Army uses, uh, any products the Army uses are, are on the table for us to address. So the Army uses products that are unique to the Army and, and to the military. And so the Manufacturing Technology Program exists to address manufacturing process for items that are beyond the risk of industry, beyond the risk of even our, our Army program offices to fund the development of the manufacturing process. And so where we have technologies that there's not a commercial need for, that, that technology where there's a, uh, a, a product that really is Army unique, uh, that's really where the Mantec program shines. There's also examples of when industry has developed a manufacturing process that that works and it's maybe not the most efficient, maybe not the most cost effective. It might be a 50 year old process and new technologies have come along that can really buy down the cost and, the, and, and increase the efficiency of that manufacturing process. But because it's a approved process that industry is comfortable with, they don't have the incentive, there's not a cost incentive for them to go out on their own and spend the research and development money to, to develop that process. And so the Army's manufacturing technology program is, is targeted at those type of applications where it's, it's beyond the risk of industry, it's beyond the risk of, of the government and, and its other existing S&T and R&D programs to, to address those risks. So uh, beyond the risk is typically associated with funding. Right? It takes money to develop a process, it takes, it takes resources to spend the time not only that, when you're talking about a uh, manufacturing process, you're usually talking about a production line that's in place. And so there's a production line somewhere that's, that's making components, or there's a, there's a, a, how, a production house out there that, that has a good ability to make a certain type of component. And so they've invested money into that process and into, that, into the equipment and into the facilities that are associated with that process. And for them to change, that takes one, a lot of research and development efforts to prove out the new process, whatever that change would be. And two, then they have to interrupt their production line, their existing production line that's making them money to cut in the new process and, and that's risky. That drives a lot of risk. And, and if there's not uh, a huge reward in terms of follow-on production contracts, big quantities of parts being made, then there are times when that's just beyond the risk of industry to do. They're happy, they're comfortable with the existing process, and so that's what I mean by beyond the risk is, is it's, it's a financial decision that they make to not move forward with that on their own. They need some push, they need some sort of, of um, 
incentive from the government really to do this. And as the ones who want to use these new products, these new capabilities, uh, we on the Army side have that push. That's what the Mantech program exists to do, is to, is to provide some funding, to provide some seed funding for uh, these organizations to drive new manufacturing processes. One of the best examples we have is, is the recent work that we've done with the Enhanced Combat Helmet, where uh, the, the industry, the helmet industry, for years, for decades, has been using Kevlar-based helmet systems. And that's what, that's what worked. It's a great, great solution. Uh, as threats have evolved, there's, there's a need for new materials to enter. And, and the Army had done research into materials 30 years ago, uh, high, uh, ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene that was shown from a research and a science and technology standpoint to be uh, to have great ballistic properties, but the manufacturing process didn't exist to make that material, the raw material, in a in a high quantity, affordable uh, way. Affordable. Um, there was no affordable process for making that that, and, uh, and and the cost just was too high for the army to say, yeah, we're going to make all of our helmets out of that. Not only that. The manufacturing process for taking those sheets of material and consolidating them into the shape of a helmet didn't exist. And again, there wasn't the incentive out there for the existing body armor, excuse me, the existing helmet manufacturers to, to make that. And so the Army invested uh, through the Mantic program in incentivizing by putting money on the table, organizations, companies, uh, major companies, and some new small companies too that had not been in that space to develop the manufacturing techniques, processes, and, and pilot lines to be able to show that the Army could achieve these affordable helmets that drive, uh, drive down the cost but give you a higher protection against the, against the threats that we're seeing versus the traditional Kevlar helmets. And so we incentivize the industrial base. We, we work closely with them, the, uh, the companies that make those things, to, to drive that risk down for them so that they can then take it and go. And now that helmet is being purchased by the Army. It's being purchased by the Marine Corps. It's what's being fielded right now. Uh, a derivative of what we worked on uh, four or five years ago is now what's being pushed out into the hands of soldiers and, and Marines as they go, go out on the battlefield. Okay. So the, the Mantic program is set up to address two main elements. One is affordability. The second is producibility. And so we, uh, we, we often have projects that through improvements in the producibility element and, and by driving down the cost of the production of that, element, that, that item, it, it improves the performance of those items. It's just by the nature as you improve the manufacturing process, you get better tolerances or you're able to, to drive in a smaller form factor because of how you're manufacturing it or you combine elements, combine components into a single component that's more manufacturable. Uh, you're able to drive, at times, drive the, the technology, the performance of the technology forward. And so it's kind of a side benefit, and, but, but really we look at producibility and affordability. When we're looking at proposals, we have a set of criteria that includes those items. Uh, it includes also how does this, this project fit within the Army's big strategy, you know, the, the strategic goals and, and initiatives that the Army has, uh, both at the S&T level and at the uh, the requirements side, we use TRADOC in, in their efforts, their priorities to look at uh, big Army initiatives. We, we look at the Chief of Staff's initiatives and, uh, of course, the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army for Research and Technology is, uh, is the, the individual who owns or the group that owns this program. They're the ones that have complete oversight over the Mantic program. We look at their major initiatives and, and try to align our investments with those major initiatives. All right, so there's, there's a push to go digital in terms of sensors for night vision, degraded visual environments, and, and so on. Right now, the state of the industry is uh, analog tubes, image intensifier tubes, that, uh, that, that are in every night vision device. The, the soldiers wear them, the, the pilots have them in their helmets, and, and the sensors that are even embedded into the structures or the, into the vehicles are, are all driven by these image intensifier tubes. And they've... They've worked really well, um, but as we want to have more distributed sensing, uh, we need to and, and go to a smaller form factor for a lot of these things, drive down the size and the weight and the, the power requirements for these sensors. We need to go to digital sensors. 
And the Army has recognized that. There's a lot of investment in the night vision uh, world on digital sensors. The Army Mantic program invested several years ago in uh, low light level sensors. It's a digital image intensifier uh, sensing sensor that, uh, that we worked on directly with a company to, to drive down the cost, to increase the, the reliability and the performance um, and the producibility, excuse me, the producibility and the reliability, the performance came along as a result um, of these sensors. And that particular sensor was, was targeted towards the Apache helicopter. Uh, there's a sensor out on the nose of that helicopter that allows the pilot to see, uh, to see in degraded visual environments, especially at nighttime. And by working directly with that, that particular industry, by working with the night vision labs and the program manager for the Apache helicopter, we were able to drive down the cost, increase the producibility. Uh, for example, the reliability went up on these sensors. The yields went up incredibly, uh, which again drives down costs even further. And those sensors are now flying on the Apache helicopters. They're being rotated in as, as the helicopters are brought back in for maintenance. They rotate these sensors in. They drop right into the existing uh, box, essentially, where the old sensors were. And uh, feedback from the pilots is that they're they're great. They're getting they're better able to see. They they have better performance than the old uh, the old items. Uh, the the pilots also used to have a tube right here on their on their head on their helmet that was pretty big and bulky. And now with the sensor out on the on the um, the nose of the helicopter, they don't have to have that. They can have a basically just a screen that they look at, and this huge tube is now gone. Think of it basically transitioning from TVs with your old CRT tube-based television to the more modern digital uh, LCD and, and plasma TVs is essentially what we've done with respect to those sensors. Additive manufacturing gets a lot of press these days, 3D printing, and, and the Mantic program is, uh, is not immune to that. We, we're paying attention to that very closely. Uh, I think that industry in a lot of ways is going to lead a lot of what happens within the additive manufacturing space. However, I think the Army has a great opportunity to take advantage of that and to use additive manufacturing in some specific ways. And the Mantic program is looking heavily at additive manufacturing and, and how we can apply the techniques, the, the materials that are being looked at and the processes to do things like repair expensive components and eventually get to the part where we can build new parts, uh, not just replacement parts for existing existing components, but entirely new designs, entirely new items that, that haven't existed before using additive manufacturing. And so we're working closely with the, uh, the National Additive Manufacturing Innovation Institute, known as America Makes, to uh, partner with them on developing roadmaps where we're looking at Army applications. They're looking at a more national scale. They're utilizing their, their membership base to drive road mapping within their organization. And we're, we're taking the same process that they've used to drive those roadmaps, and we're, we're applying it internally to the Army. And so we're developing a roadmap right now in additive manufacturing that will help us target the technologies, the processes, the materials, and most importantly, the applications where we can look, start looking at additive manufacturing and, and seeing how we can drive that technology into how we operate, how we improve readiness, maybe we can reduce cost, uh, especially if we can repair parts instead of having to wait to buy, having to pay and wait to buy brand new ones altogether. And so I think additive manufacturing holds a lot of promise. That's an area that we are actively pursuing. We have projects in that space right now, and I think that'll continue for, for quite some time. The Mantec program is working closely with the Department of Defense and, uh, and the administration, really, on uh, supporting the President's National Manufacturing Innovation Institute effort. And it's a, it's a public-private partnership. It's a network of public-private partnerships known as Manufacturing Innovation Institutes that are uh, focused on driving innovation into manufacturing domestically and bringing those technologies, those processes to bear such that the U.S. Can, can regain its edge in manufacturing, regain its edge as a technology superpower uh, across the world. And so the manufacturing technology programs uh, across the Department of Defense have pulled together to help support that by providing subject matter experts, uh, topical inputs, funding, 
into establishing what are now exist six manufacturing innovation institutes that are led by the Department of Defense. And the Army is actively engaged in, in those institutes to include having folks who are the government program managers for, for four of them now. And the Mantic program is, uh, is leveraging those institutes in several ways. One, we have personnel that are on, uh, on the, the advisory boards and, and part of the, the senior leadership on the government side that's supporting those institutes and helping shape where their investments go, uh, their strategic development, uh, strategic roadmaps, as well as folks who are tracking the, the technology projects that they do and, and helping uh, not only track them, but help take what comes out of those projects and put them back into Army systems, Army applications. And so we're leveraging this huge network of companies and academic institutions that are part of these institutes, as well as the significant resources that have been brought to bear. There is uh, well over $500 million in, uh, in cost share that's been brought forward by these institutes. The, um, the fun part about them is it's a one-to-one -one cost share whenever a company comes in and says we're standing up an institute or an organization has come in and is standing up an institute, uh, they, they have to bring a one-to-one -one cost share for what the government puts in. And, uh, and we get to leverage that. So we have projects that are specifically giving funding to or using the institutes to contract to, uh, to, to get better than one-to-one -one cost share back. Uh, we have one project with the Additive Manufacturing Institute that is that is taking advantage of some, some in-situ monitoring, basically cameras and, and sensors on the machine. So as the part's being built, you can see what's happening uh, uh, at a microstructure, microstructure level of, of that part. Uh, we're working through the Additive Manufacturing Institute, known as America Makes, with General Electric and some other companies on, on leveraging that expertise that they have and, and then bringing that back into Army systems.